boom, you know, the window, the glass. And it's moving from window to window. And that's what fire does, it's gonna travel. It was windy that day, I'm sure that fed the fire, that, you know, the oxygen got in there. And that fire just took off. Ook een andere brandweerman was erbij en zag alles. We saw the fire and the smoke on the south side of building 7. A lot of damage, a lot of damage. And the smoke, tremendous amount of smoke. I couldn't tell what floor it ended at. Hij zag ook de oostelijke kant van Toren 7. The windows on approximately 10 to 15th floor of building 7 started to fail from the heavy fire inside. We looked at it and said, there's so much fire in this building. Nobody's going to put this fire out. Toen ze vernamen dat Toren 7 niet meer te redden was, ging hij weg en zag hij hoe het gebouw uiteindelijk instortte. We heard it sounded like a jet engine. And if you, we looked over the building, you could see the top of building 7. And it just started to shake and then just disappeared down. And it was down in about 7 or 8 or 9 seconds. It was just gone. I saw the fire, I saw the damage. And that, that was good enough for me. Uh, I, I never heard any charges. I never heard any sequence of explosions, timed explosions. And I never heard anyone talk about that until a long time later. In New England werd het raadsel van het gesmolten staal van Toren 7 ontsluierd. Professor Jonathan Barnett, ingenieur en branddeskundige, vond de oplossing op een stortplaats. It came from a much larger beam. This was the size of steel that they used in the construction of Tower 7. They didn't use this particular kind of steel in Towers 1 or Towers 2. So that's why we know its pedigree. It was a surprise uh, to me because it was so eroded and deformed. And so um, we took it for analysis in the lab. Well, it was attacked by uh, what we determined was a liquid slag. When we did the analysis, we actually identified it as an, uh, a, a liquid containing iron, sulfur, and oxygen. You can see what it does is it attacks the grain boundaries, and this, this bit would eventually have fallen out, and it would continue the attack. Volgens professor Sissen smolt het staal niet, maar werd het weggevreten door de extreem hete branden die het staal in de puinhopen na 11 september wekenlang verhitte. De zwavel kwam van de ontelbare tonnen gipsplaten die werden verpulverd en opbranden. I don't find it very mysterious at all that if I have steel in this sort of a high temperature atmosphere that's rich in oxygen and sulfur, this would be the kind of result I would expect. Maar de manier waarop officiële instanties de instorting van Toren 7 onderzochten, maakte sommige mensen achterdochtig. FIMA, het Federaal Bureau voor Crisismanagement, leidde het eerste onderzoek. Het kwam tot het besluit dat Toren 7 instortte door de hevige, uren aanhoudende branden, die bovendien werden gevoed door duizenden liters diesel die in het torengebouw opgeslagen waren. Toch luidde de conclusie dat bijkomend onderzoek nodig was. Critici wijzen erop dat deze conclusie al zes jaar oud is. Shaim Sander onderzocht het staal van de Twin Towers. Hij leidt aan het Amerikaans Nationaal Normalisatie Instituut het onderzoek van Toren 7. We hebben dit this for a little over two years. En doing a, a two or two and a half year investigation is not at all unusual. Uh, that's the same kind of time frame that takes place when we do airplane uh, crash investigation. It takes a few years. De onderzoekers ontwierpen vier complexe computermodellen van Toren 7. Ze geloven niet langer dat de dieselvoorraden aan de basis van de instorting lagen. Our working hypothesis now actually suggests that it was normal building fires that were build, spreading, growing and spreading throughout the multiple floors that may have caused the, the ultimate collapse of the buildings. Andere wolkenkrabbers zijn door een brand niet ingestort. Maar op 11 september was er een unieke samenloop van omstandigheden. Toren 7 werd bovenop een elektriciteitsstation opgetrokken. Er waren veel brandhaarden. De waterleidingen waren na de instorting van de Twin Towers afgesneden, waardoor de sprinklerinstallaties niet werkten. En de brandweer hield zich vooral bezig met het redden van mensenlevens. De onderzoekers concentreerden zich op de oostelijke kant, waar lange balken onder enorme druk kwamen te staan. Volgens hen woedde het vuur lang genoeg om de vele verbindingen van de staalbalkenstructuur te verzwakken. 
Vooral de dunnere vloerbalken en de verbindingen tussen de balken en de pijlers moesten eraan geloven. Door de enorme hitte verzwakten die verbindingen en bogen de balken door tot ze uiteindelijk begaven. The combination of those two effects makes that column go unstable. When that happens, it leads then to a very large unsupported column length. Harde bewijzen uit een ander gebouw van het World Trade Center verklaren hoe Toren 7 door vuur werd ondermijnd en instortte. Several of us went into building 5 and as we walked along on the floor, we came to the edge of a concrete slab and looked out and were stunned because we saw a major collapse. We saw an interior section of the building that had collapsed simply due to fire. Het staal werd urenlang verhit. De verbindingen bogen door en begaven het. Maar waarom zakt de toren 7 zo vlug en dan nog kaarsrecht in elkaar? The penthouse dropped and then the entire uh, perimeter of the main building begins and goes straight down in six and a half seconds, which is virtually free fall speed. It turns out that when you have connections that essentially don't have strength, uh, for the loads that they are being subjected to uh, and you have this massive failure of a column, uh, it does not take time. There's no, the structure has lost all integrity at that point in time. Sommige onverklaarbare zaken werden opgehelderd, maar de belangrijkste vragen bleven onbeantwoord. Hoe werd het vermeende complot uitgevoerd? Waarom? Door wie? Waren er binnenlandse diensten bij betrokken? Richard Clark was op 11 september de presidentiële hoofdadviseur voor terrorismebestrijding. Op die bewuste ochtend was hij samen met vicepresident Dick Cheney in het Witte Huis. The people who believe in conspiracy theories, and particularly this one about WTC7, uh, don't understand government and clearly have never worked in government. Uh, anyone who's ever worked in government will tell you two things. That the government doesn't have the competence to do a large-scale conspiracy like this. Uh, and number two, it can't maintain secrecy. Uh, there's almost nothing that I know of in 30 years of having top secret clearances that hasn't come out in the Washington Post and the New York Times. There can be no whitewash at the White House. So uh, there's no way uh, this conspiracy of knocking down WTC7 could have happened. But he's got 30 years of experience. I don't care what kind of fucking experience he has, man. I don't care. He's a person in the system. Of course he's going to tell you those kinds of things. You honestly think Richard Clark is going to come out and say, oh yeah, of course the government was part of it. Oh yeah, of course there's a cover-up. No, he's going to fucking toe the party line and defend the government. He's going to defend his ex-bosses. Come on, man. Elk weekend verzamelen zelfverklaarde waarheidsactivisten op Ground Zero. We think we're being lied to, and we can prove that. We're giving out free information about questions of 9-11. We don't come up with any particular theories. We're not going to tell you what happened because we don't know what happened. And I think it's extremely disrespectful from somebody outside of 9-11 to tell you exactly what happened because these questions are unanswered. You know, questions of what happened to World Trade Center 7 are unanswered. I guess everyone's entitled to their opinion. I, it kind of angers me because I was there. I've heard people talk about it that come from Cincinnati and California and wherever else they come from. I, I was here, you weren't. I, I think they have no respect for all the friends of mine that I lost and all the people that died that day. It's like a slap in their face. Bijna 3000 mensen kwamen op 11 september 2001 in New York om het leven. Onder hen 343 New Yorkse brandweerlieden. De brandweercommandant van toen hoopt dat het officiële rapport over Toren 7 een pijnlijk hoofdstuk in de Amerikaanse geschiedenis zal afsluiten. Conspiracies can always be more exciting than the real thing because you can always add to them. It makes for great fiction. And I enjoy great fiction myself, but uh, when it comes to real life, I think we have to know one side of the page is real life, one side of the page is fiction, and draw the line between them and live in the real world and enjoy our fiction as fiction.